All right, welcome to Texas Truck Channel, and we're gonna prove something here today. There's a lot of talk, lockers, front, rear. How center. does it affect your turning radius? Center, right. We can triple lock this sucker. How does it affect your turning radius? We're on a loose surface, so it's not gonna tear anything up. It's not gonna bind the driveline too bad. But we do know it does affect it. We've been off-roading, you can yeah, feel it. You it will bind up. It's always harder to turn. How much does it affect it? We're gonna find out today. So yeah, what we're gonna do here, and the question that this comes from is, people go, should you get an air locker over an e-locker? Because the theory is that e-lockers sometimes don't unlock mm -hmm. when you need to make a sharp turn. Mm -hmm. Well, one, I argue that modern e-lockers unlock every time I turn them off. Yep. Um, so maybe that's not the issue it used to be. Sure. And two, what is the difference between it being two-wheel drive four-wheel drive, which means the center dip is locked. Right. Does that make it worse? Right. And then if you lock the rear, does that make it worse? And then this In front. this truck, we're lucky enough to have a both front and rear locking diffs, so we can lock the front and see with it, what that really does, how bad it is. We've got cones, we're gonna measure it. We've got drones, we've got cones, we're gonna show you at the end. Let's get into it. All Hop right. on in, Greg. So the way we're gonna do this for measurement is we're gonna place a cone on hub center where he starts. He's gonna leave the wheel turned hard left and he's gonna roll slowly so we don't cause a scrubbing issue and make it shorter than it needs to be. So right now, we're in two-wheel drive. All diffs are open. Take, right. it, take it nice and slow, see what we got. There we go. So he's going slow to make sure it doesn't scrub. This is just like you're driving in a normal parking lot, but we're on dirt because that reflects off-road situations better. And wait till you're parallel, keep going, keep going. All right, I think that's good. So let's drop a cone. All right, we'll measure that afterwards. Bring it back around. Pull four more, 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 more. All right, so now let's put it in four wheel drive high. Okay. It's over here. Four high. Flashing. Okay. It's on. So now the center diff is locked Correct. in the transfer case, but right. both front and rear diffs are open independent. And that's the difference between four auto and four high. Exactly. For those that wonder. So let's see if it's bigger than this is. So you can see the front tire is following the similar path. But I can hear the tires binding more than they were before. There's a little bit of, a little bit of binding going on. Okay, a little more, and stop. Okay, let's grab another cone. So, for point of reference, it's about, we'll measure it later, it looks like to be about two feet difference with the center diff locked. Okay, all right, now we're gonna try four-wheel drive. Or low, oh, four-wheel four drive, rear locker. Rear locker. Is it flashing anything? No, it's just, it's on down there. Okay. That's it. Okay. Now this is four locker. So the, the four wheel drive high, so the center is locked and the rear is locked. Let's see what it does. Does the rear diff make that big of a difference? I can already tell you his radius line is further out in the gravel. And now you can hear the tires binding in the rear. Oh, wow. They are identical. For all intents and purposes, these are identical. That's interesting. It almost helped turn it a it little bit. It almost drug. So the inside yeah. tire was dragging because yeah. the way a differential works is it allows the inside tire to spin more or less. When you lock it, it makes them one to one. It kind of pulls it almost. I felt like it was pulling it in. That's interesting. So when your rear dip is on, that already proves that the rear diff is not messing you up on your hairpin turn on the trail. Shows you that a rear lock is really important. Very important. <laughs> Get that one first. Okay, let's try this with the front locks. That's good. Okay, we've reset. Okay. Now, it's time to lock all four, but that means you have to go into four low for this truck. Four low, which really shouldn't affect the turning radius at all. No, it's still, it's still locked one to one. And yeah. then front and rear lock. Okay, it's okay. done flashing. All right. And front and rear locker is on. It's on. Okay, so now we've got front diff locked, rear diff locked, and center. Let's see what it does. I can already see it's pushing outside the line that it was in previously. And there's definitely some scrub. Wow. 
Wow. <laughs> a little more, a little more, and that's it. Stop right there. Okay. Front diff. Um, all right, how did it feel on the trike? Uh, it definitely was pushing like crazy. And did you have more resistance in the wheel? Oh, yeah, you can feel it talking and fighting to you. Okay, absolutely. Okay. I'm, wow. So far, I'm amazed how much just four wheel drive alone made a difference. Right, front and, and rear. And then rear locker made, almost helped. Almost, almost helped. helped. Oh, what? Well, hey, hey, what's going on here? Well, I'm trying to unlock, but it's staying locked. Oh, wait, so the theory of an e locker maybe not unlocking might be real? E well, I mean, yeah, air locker just poof, it pulls a pivot. Oh, yeah, yeah. I feel a little bit wrong all of a sudden. All right. <laughs> Coast it back and forth and just rock it out. Yeah, I think we're going to go to four high. Oh, you're out now. I hear it. Okay. But if you're on a trail and you're stuck on a hairpin turn, you may not have enough feet to roll and unlock it. So the first measurement is going to be actually open diff, two wheel drive. So no center lock and no rear lock. What do you have, Craig? I'll hold it tight. We are at 27 feet six inches okay and that's on our gravel lot let's try the next one the next one is rear diff locked i'm sorry the rear one the next one is four wheel drive open diffs we are at 30 feet eight inches so we gained what two feet right okay or three feet the next yeah, three, one three feet is 37 feet three inches what is that 37 feet three inches okay so it takes 10 extra feet and let's double check that to go from open diff to every single thing locked. Look at that. It's just shy of 10 feet. So it's nine foot, nine inches to lock up everything. Yeah. I wanna do one more test. I wanna do two wheel drive rear diff lock. Let's okay. do that right now. All right. All right, we're reset. Two wheel drive rear diff locked. Let's see what she does. You think it'll be sharper? No. That's the question though. Okay, you can see here, got a little bit of buckling. Oh, but look how tight that is. Wait a second. Wait a second. For reference, this cone is the two-wheel drive, no rear locker. Okay, it's a little bit more. And stop, stop. Okay, let's measure that. Okay, and for simplicity, we're measuring cone top to cone top, so it's consistent. We're not worried about base. Two foot, one inch. So with a diff locked and two-wheel <clears> drive, you lose a two-foot turning radius. I don't know, man. Can I, I, can I do one more bonus test? Sure. For auto, because it doesn't lock the center up, but you still get the advantage of four-wheel drive. Okay, let's do that. Just yeah, for fun? let's do that. All right, you're good. All right. For auto, which does not lock the center diff. It leaves, puts it in four-wheel drive, but leaves the center diff open. And you're doing diffs open. Diffs so you're open. doing a two-wheel drive to two-wheel drive comparison. Okay, come on. Well, not necessarily, because I got four-wheel drive. You've got four-wheel you all drive. Okay, for reference, this cone right here, I'm gonna take the lock diff. This cone is two-wheel drive, not four-wheel drive auto. And it appears to be exactly the same. Actually, maybe a little bit tighter. Okay. I'm going to call that margin of error. Sure. From resetting. So it just tells you four auto is exactly the same. So conclusions, Craig. And the conclusion is that's why four auto is important. We want it in more of these trucks. Yes. Because it, there are times that it, it is helpful. Well, and for inclement weather, like when you're driving the street, there was, you heard there was no binding there. So right. if you're in like ice and snow, you can it's drive not, around for auto. It's, it's not fine. pushing you. It's not right. pushing you. It's not binding you or pushing out the road or anything yeah. like that. To answer the question of should you go air locker over e-locker, mm. maybe. If you're serious about rock crawling, that's probably if what to go. If you're seriously in situations all the time, we're in the middle of an obstacle and you need it to lock and unlock. And unlock. That's the thing. That's, yeah. I'll combat that with you don't necessarily need to unlock it because we lost Not, the, not the rear locker. Not the rear locker. The rear locker can stay locked. Even if it won't engage, it won't matter uh, because the rear locker only loses two feet of radius. I'll also say, we're going to test other vehicles with this. Yeah. Wheelbase has a bit, is a big factor oh, of sure, that. Sure. I have a feeling a shorter wheelbase, it may be the reverse. It might be. Well, I don't know about that. I don't know. Stay tuned. We'll find out on something else. We'll pick like a Ranger or something yeah. shorter like that with a rear locker. That was interesting to me. It does show in all three are locked, center, front, and rear. 
Seems like a freaking... <laughs> it's hard to turn it. Yeah. You shouldn't turn it off. Yeah, you shouldn't turn it off. It's just a straight line machine. <laughs> yeah. That's it. So that was a challenge. But if you run an obstacle, that's what you need um, as long as it doesn't fault on you. So there's that. Thanks for watching Tech's Chart Channel. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm curious to see how this comes out.